B of House Report 116 to 126. For what purpose does the gentleman from Iowa seek recognition? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, to offer amendment number three, uh, according to the rule. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number three, printed in Part B of House Report number 116-126, offered by Mr. King of Iowa. Pursuant to House Resolution 460, the gentleman from Iowa, Mr. King, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Iowa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I rise to offer my King Amendment number three, and what it does is it strikes Section 126 in the underlying bill. And Section 126 is language that um, it's notwithstanding language that prohibits the executive branch from using any of the funds in the Department of Treasury's forfeiture fund, the Civil Asset for Forfeiture Fund, to be used for uh, anything to build a wall or a road that might support a wall on our southern border. And the language is very expansive in the bill. It says, none of the funds may be obligated, expanded, expended, or used to plan, design, construct, or carry out a project to construct a wall, barrier, fence, or road along the southern border of the United States, or a road to provide access to the wall, barrier, or fence constructed along the southern border of the United States. And so my amendment strikes that language, Mr. Chairman, and it does so with the idea in mind that we have a president who was elected with a mandate to secure our border. Uh, this has been an ongoing battle for the last two plus years, two and a half years, and still the resources are short. I think we should have done a better job in the previous Congress to get that money into, uh, into this project, but the president is going where he can to find the resources to keep his campaign promises. And uh, so I certainly want to support that by striking that language and allowing the president to then have access to what amounts to a six, uh, $601 million that would be generated generated, um, be freed up by my amendment. And uh, it recognizes this, that the U.S. Treasury has uh, about $13.6 billion that are allocated to it under this underlying bill. And this small piece of money here uh, is not a lot of money, but it does send a message that that uh, it's going to get harder and harder for the president to build the wall if we don't strike this language. And I want to support the president's mission to do that. It's ironic, I think, that um, we are spending today, and I'm the only one in Congress that I know of that tracks this spending, and, but we're spending at least $6.7 million a mile for every mile of the 2,000 miles of our southern border to secure that border. And just doing the math in my head quickly, that turns out to be about $13.4 billion, almost the exact same amount that's freed up to the Treasury. We're spending to secure the border for something probably less than 50% efficiency. When you build a wall, it's 99 point something percent efficiency. We need to let the president be the president. He's declared a national emergency, and we need to strike this language from the bill so the president has the latitude to do that which the people have elected him for and I would reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. What purpose does the gentleman from Illinois rise? Mr. Chairman, I rise in, to claim in opposition to the amendment offered by Mr. King. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Illinois for five minutes. This provision ensures that money from the Treasury Forfeiture Fund can continue to flow to other departments and agencies that rely upon this funding to augment critical operations and support emergent operational needs such as computer, forensic equipment, Title III wiretap intercepts, and anti-money laundering investigation. It also ensures that the bipartisan, bicameral funding levels enacted by Congress and signed into law by the President are not flouted by the executive action. Article I, Section 9 of the U.S. Constitution states, no money shall be drawn from the Treasury but in consequence of appropriations made by law. Any construction of border infrastructure should be based on bipartisan agreement between both chambers of Congress that is enacting the law, not by an impulsive directive from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue that disregards the will of Congress and undermines the ability of the Department of Treasury and the Department of Homeland Security to address known threats against our financial system and the nation. For these reasons, I oppose this amendment and urge my colleagues to do the same. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Chair recognized is the gentleman from Iowa. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd, I'd yield to the gentleman from Georgia so much time as he may consume. Chair recognized the gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to rise and support the gentleman's amendment. Uh, and I'm glad he's brought this forward to highlight a few things. Ms. Torres said earlier these funds could be used to assist local law enforcement. In fact, they can't. 
These are excess funds, and the statute clearly says to be transferred to federal, federal agencies for law enforcement purposes. That's what the administration was using them for. A little bit of a history lesson the last six months. We went through a government shutdown because of this issue. We had a Homeland Security Conference Committee report that was supposed to resolve this issue. So deficient that the president declared a national emergency re relating to this. And now we're having to have a supplemental budget discussion to deal with this very same issue while restricting the administration's access to these funds to address this very issue. Because of those reasons, I support the gentleman's amendment as for adoption. Have to yield back. Mr. Chairman, General I reserve. General Kamaya was recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I reserve. Gentleman reserves. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Illinois. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Iowa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just um, some concluding thoughts on this. This underlying bill is an increase of $793.9 million uh, more than last year, and it is $484.4 million more than requested by the administration. There's plenty of resources in this underlying bill to take care of the obligations that, that uh, this, this Congress has to the people of this country. But they also have an obligation to secure our border, restore the respect for the rule of law. And the chaos that we have on the border is not just something that's reflecting back on us in the United States. And I'm hearing many laments about the tragedies, the individual tragedies. We're counting them, though, on one hand for the most part. I asked the Secretary of Homeland Security under oath just late last year, Kirsten Nielsen at the time, whom I respect and appreciate, how many died on the way to our southern border. She said, I don't have the data for that. I'll get to you. And I said, it'll be too long for that. I want your best estimate. How many died on the way from Central America to our southern border? Her answer finally came, Congressman, it would be thousands and thousands. That's the history of what we're trying to shut off here. And they will keep coming until we end up deciding that we're not going to accept them anymore. We must secure our border if we're going to be a sovereign nation. This is a piece of it. I support the president, and I urge the adoption of this amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Chair recognizes it. No one's here. Question on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Iowa. Those in favor, say aye. Those opposed, say no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman. From Iowa. I would ask for a recorded vote. Gentlemen, request a recorded vote pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18 for the proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Iowa will be postponed.